Hi, everyone, and uh, I just want to extend my uh, thanks to the FSAI for inviting me here today to come and speak about salt and sodium reduction to you. I've come over here from, uh, from Sweden, um, where I work with salt reduction and sodium reduction uh, with uh, various food companies around the world as part of the Saltwell Company, which is a Swedish company completely dedicated to salt reduction and sodium reduction. We're a daughter company, actually, of a 200-year-old family Swedish salt enterprise um, called the Salinity Group. During this talk, you'll hear a wee bit about salt and so sodium reduction in general, as well as a couple of key product groups in salt reduction, such as bread, snacks, pizzas, and sauce. Although short, I hope it can help progress the salt reduction and sodium reduction agenda here in Ireland. Um, and afterwards, I'm here to talk and chat alongside a couple of colleagues, uh, Gareth, uh, Eddie and Sam here as well. Before going further, I just want to look really quickly about why we're here even talking about salt and, and sodium. Um, the simple truth of the, in fact of the matter is that it's about saving lives and improving the health and well-being of our friends, family and people around us. Food intake, as we all know, plays a huge role in the health of people and sadly millions of people die around the world related to uh, deaths attributed to high salt intake. The major problem with salt is that it contains sodium, which increases blood pressure, which in turn causes hypertension issues and cardiovascular diseases. Globally, the WHO and nationally, organisations such as FSAI are expecting food manufacturers to produce foods which are low in salt significantly. As food industry, industry experts, you all know, and it's been mentioned uh, earlier as well, the key role that salt plays in food as a preservative, as a binder, as a carrier, as a nutrient. Um, in short, salt is a building block uh, which is near impossible to remove completely from food production. At the same time, it's also very dangerous because it contains, because it contains sodium. When working with salt reduction, most of you would have already learned firsthand already that significantly reducing the dosage is not feasible because of the techno functionality and role that salt plays in food. That's where natural clean label sodium reduction solutions come into play. And one of those solutions is salt well, a natural sea salt, low in sodium and, create, and created by a natural solar evaporation process. Compared to standard salt, salt well is low in sodium by around 35% and has a smooth, salty profile. It's used often as a one-to-one -one replacement for standard salt, and it's processed in BRC certified facilities, which means it's a very high quality food grade ingredient. It's used around the world by thousands of food producers in the US and Canada, to uh, pretty much all the markets in Europe, the UK, India, Middle East, Australia, New Zealand, and parts of Asia. Because it's a natural salt, the labelling is short and clean too. It's labelled as salt, sea salt, or reduced sodium sea salt. Taking a quick look at salt well in application, let's say you have a 1% uh, dosage of salt in a solution. That's the equivalent of around 388 milligrams of sodium. Using the same weight to weight dosage of salt well, your solution has around 256 milligrams of sodium, the equivalent to 0.65 grams of salt per 100 grams of product declared on pack. However, the performance, function, and taste remains alike. When it comes to saltiness, Consumer preference actually has an optimum level for each recipe. Of course, the exact level is an individual preference, but when tested on a larger group of people, we find a pattern of the optimal level. This is one example of a study made on chicken soup, where the optimal salt saltiness would be around 0.8% NaCl or salt. 
if salt well were to be used in this soup, the declaration would be around 0.5 to 6%. So. Now that we've covered a few basics, I have a few commercial examples with brands removed, of course, and insights to share, which I hope will inspire your salt and sodium reduction reformulation projects here in Ireland. Starting with bread. Although not considered salty in flavour, bread typically contributes a significant amount of salt to our daily diet. For bread products, salt plays a vital role. It helps preserve the bread, especially the colour and the flavour. It helps activate the glutens and tighten them. It has a retarding effect on the yeast activation process. It indirectly contributes to crust colouring and it gives the bread flavour. You can see here in this picture how different loaves look baked at different levels of salt. At 0% it's overly airy because the fermentation process has gone too fast. At 10% salt it's barely recognisable and definitely not edible. And at 2% it's lovely, however it has too much sodium in it. I'll just share a case example here from a northern European bread which has reduced its salt levels down significantly and very simply without lengthy reformulation and without changes to process or manufacturing methods. In this case, the bread was made as a reference bread using standard salt at 1 kg per 100 kgs of dough. And a new reduced sodium bread was developed using salt well. This went through a thorough professional PD process and sensorial panel of seven trained experts and consumer test panel of 66 respondents evaluating. And it was mentioned earlier the significance of and importance of involving your consumers in these as well. So um, I was uh, pleased to hear someone else mention the significance of consumer testing earlier. Nothing else was changed in this, in this uh, project apart from a switch from standard salt to salt oil. The result for this bread ended up with a 26% reduction, reduction in sodium, equivalent to 0.74 grams of salt per 100 grams of product. As you can see, hopefully, in the attribute diagram, the reduced sodium uh, bread in green and the reference bread, bread in blue almost follow each other in those taste attributes. There were no significant differences noticed in the, by the consumer panel, so 66 respondents, and none noticed by the trained panellists. Well, being here in Ireland, I uh, took a cheeky look around uh, the supermarket to see uh, what the salt levels were in bread, um, and found uh, it and looked at compared to the WHO and some other salt targets, and none of them are in line just yet. Some are close, some have some simple work to do. Uh, but by using uh, a reduced sodium salt like Saltwell, it's reassuring to know that in the coming year, salt levels will be able to get down and onto the targets that you have set for your industry. Moving from bread to sauces, here's a case example as well from a European tomato ketchup that was, has successfully reduced its salt levels down from 2% to 1.3 by switching its traditional standard salt to reduce sodium sea salt salt well. As with the bread case, this brand also used a 60 consumer panel sensorial analysis and a trained panel to evaluate the product before launching it on the shelves. The results are shown here. As you can see, the reference source in blue and the sodium reduced sauce in red follow each other, showing no significant difference in any of the key taste attributes and achieving a 35% reduction in the added salt. Moving from sauces onto pizzas, pizzas are a popular product from the, to get from the supermarket, either chilled or frozen. They are, however, made up of various components, and each of those components typically has very high salt levels on average. This results in the pizza as a whole often being a salt bomb. We experience um, that for impactful salt reduction in pizzas, chilled and frozen, the component to first focus on initially is the bread, the crust, dough, depending on what you do, 
call it. The reason for that is because the component which is consistent across a pizza is always the bread or the dough, the, the crust. The sauces, toppings, cheeses often will change, however there's always a crust or a bread. And because that makes up to 40 to 60% of a pizza, you can make a significant impact. As an example, just a frozen pizza sold at some UK supermarkets. You can look in the red bar on the left, you see that it contains around 600 milligrams of sodium, which is above the target. But if you do a direct swap to salt well, we get the sodium level under the target. This is a good example of a product where sodium comes from different ingredients, as there's salt in the dough, the cheese, tomato sauce and toppings. In this case, as a food manufacturer, you might need to go back to your suppliers to get them to lower the, the salt in the ingredient that they supply to you. So, sodium reduction may be a bit more challenging in a component type of food product as a pizza than compared to a sauce or a bread, however it's still very much doable. Especially if you start with the base. Lastly, and I know it's flashing here, uh, we're running out of time, um, but let's look quickly at salt reduction in savoury snacks. Important to consider in the initial phase of reducing salt in savoury snacks is what type of snack it is, because there you can start with your lowest possible baseline. For instance, is it in, you can start with the pellet or with the batters or with the doughs or in the nut roasting brine, for instance. Each of those areas has added salt and that can be re reduced significantly by using a reduced, reduced sodium salt. The other area for snack uh, applications and salt reduction is of course in the topical seasonings. With topical seasonings, an important characteristic and uh, aspect to consider is the granulation size of the salt. The smaller the granulation size, the bigger the saltiness perception is, but at the same time the faster it disappears in your mouth. That's why low sodium microfine salts are recommended for seasoning uh, savoury snacks, mixed also with a small amount of regular granular sizes so consumers visually experience salt as well. Just quickly, this is a study uh, where we noticed how when a snack dosed, dosed at 1.2% salt, the salt perception is, the, the saltiness perception was highest at granulation size of microfine. Another example here with chips, um, here we have a regular ready salted potato chip or crisp as you would call it in Ireland I, I would expect. Um, this contains around 560 grams of sodium as shown in the red bar, which if using UK benchmarks in for salt is just above the target. If we do a one to one swap with salt well, we get the sodium level down to around 358 milligrams, which is around 0.9 grams of salt and under the target. So potato crisps, it's possible to do a direct swap with salt well and have an achievable realistic sodium reduction. Just summing up, to reduce salt significantly, e.g. by 10 to 35 percent directly and doing it without compromising flavour or function, I'm fortunate uh, and to be able to safely say that after many years on the market with salt well, or whether regardless if it's a wet or a dry application, will help you there. It's naturally low in sodium, simple and easy to use, and has various granular sizes depending on application requirements. And at the same time, because it's salt, the labelling is clean and short. Salt, sea salt, or reduced sodium sea salt. Time's gone uh, pretty fast for me. I hope it hasn't gone too long for you. Um, uh, I hope this talk has and contributes to your salt reduction, sodium reduction agenda moving forward here in Ireland. I'm here to speak with afterwards, as long as I've got a couple of colleagues here from uh, the Healy Group, who are the go-to people for salt well and sodium reduction in Ireland, <coughs> Sam, Eddie and Gareth. And um, thank you.